From WBBZ TV Sports, it's time to beat the champ. Now, here are your hosts, Paul Peck and Sue Nowitzki. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome back to Lockport for our fourth and final week here at Alley Brant Lanes. We have had some outstanding bowling in our first three weeks, but I think the lanes have uh, at times bitten back at our big shot bowlers. <laughs> How are our outstanding young junior bowlers going to handle it here today? Well, we're going to give them a few pins to help them out. This <laughs> That's a good be, idea. It's going to be a handicap event, and it's going to be a singles event because a lot of times we've done doubles. It's going to be singles. Um, they've qualified one to four. One's going to bowl four, two's going to bowl three, and then the winners will go off against each other. But they're all getting some handicap. Yeah, and all of them, I believe, are pretty regular bowlers here at Alley Brant Lane, so maybe they've got a little uh, inside knowledge. <laughs> so it's our Alley Brant Junior Bowling Challenge. We always have a lot of fun with these sports shows, and I think today is going to be a lot of fun, too. Yeah, well, I always like seeing the junior bowlers because they're the future of the sport. Mm -hmm. So in a few years, they'll be making the regular, regular competition here. That is right. So which one of these four young outstanding bowlers might be the next generation? We're about to find Find out, so let's get rolling. <laughs> Match number one is Parker Phillips. We got to look at him right there. His opponent will be Anthony Roberto. And Parker Phillips going to get 11 pins on the handicap. Sue, I leave that to you to do the proper explaining, <laughs> explaining of that along with Janelle on the Castellone scoreboard. Brian's here to help me with my math. And yes, well, that's good. I'm Brian's here to help us with a lot of stuff. Day. Yeah, make sure you carry the one. <laughs> right. Parker Phillips is 13 years old from the town of Niagara. He is obviously a student. Kind of throws it like his dad. Yeah, we saw his dad <laughs> a couple weeks ago here on the show. <laughs> yeah, Parker wants to hook it a little bit more than his dad does, but... Uh... <laughs> Everybody wants to have a nice big hook on the shots there, don't they? <laughs> hey, I, I'm a down and in person, and I'm happy with it. You know, when you, uh, you know, try to uh, hook it too much, you get in too much trouble. It's better to go down and in, I think. Truer words have not been spoken. <laughs> he is so right. A nice spare pickup for Parker Phillips in the first frame. And now we get our first look at Anthony Roberto from Lockport, right here in Lockport High School, student Lockport High School. 14 years old is Anthony. And a regular bowler here in the leagues at Alley Brant Lanes. Oh, uh, we got our first two-hander. Uh, yeah, how about that? We didn't have a two-handed bowler through our first uh, three weeks of competition shows here. What's the matter, Brian? Did you ban those guys from Alley uh, Brant Lanes I here, or what? I have to. Is there such a, is there such a thing as a two-handed lefty? Uh, there is. There's got to be one. There has to be. There's got to be guys that come off that left side, though. They, Brian Borowski is the proprietor here at Alley Brant Lanes and our Beat the Champ buddy, and we, he's joined us the last couple of weeks, and he's here to uh, give us the lowdown here on the Alley Brant Lanes Junior Bowling Challenge. So how did you uh, come up with the idea here, and how did this competition evolve itself to the four bowlers that we have here today? Well, um, last year we had good success in uh, doing juniors, and I've always been an advocate of junior bowlers. I mean, they're the future of our sport, so we definitely want to encourage them to come out and bowl. So we had a tournament alongside with the uh, with the adult Beat the Champ, and uh, you know, after the competition, here are our top four bowlers. So you know, this tournament will be giving away a total of over $400 in scholarships. They'll go into their smart fund. That's great. Very nice. So it's Parker Phillips and Anthony Roberto in this match. And then in our second match will be Callie Raxenberger against Joseph Lonigan. And then the winners of those two matches will play for our Al Grant Ladies <coughs> Junior Bowling Championship in our final match of the day. So we're off and rolling here in match number one between Parker and Anthony. Don't forget to like us on the Beat the Champ Facebook page for all the schedules and upcoming events and all the always fun chatter about Beat the Champ <laughs> as well, too. Uh, that is the place to go for everything that you need to know. We are packing up and moving this traveling bowling circus to Manor Two Lanes for next week's show. 
where Parker Phillips keeps doing that. He might wind himself up on that regular show. He's got a, a, 11 uh, extra pins of handicap to go along with that as well. So, yeah, so he's starting um, off with a 31 in the first frame. Matter well, two for next month, and then we're headed to uh, your other place, yes, the Classic, we'll classic. Uh, after that towards September. I think the bet is um, father, son, whoever's got the higher score is to buy ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Added motivation. Well, yeah. Oh, look at this. Yeah. Yeah. All right, kind of showing his uh, dad up. Oh, wow. Yes, doing a very impressive job of that as well, also. Now, I don't know if you have uh, saw, but um, Walter Ray Jr. is probably one of the greatest bowlers um, in the history of the PBA Tour. Um, bowled in the tournament, actually bowled two-handed and shot 300. Come on. Nice. I knew that. I had heard that he could bowl two-handed, but I did not hear about the 300. He shot 300 in the pro bowling tournament. And really? And he's a very, probably one of the more basic down-and-in type bowlers right. that you can do. He's a horseshoe champion of all time. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, he actually bowled and shot 200, three, 300 two-handed. Wow. Pretty impressive. That is very impressive. Pretty impressive. And he's not a spring chicken either. No. Well, you saw Anthony Roberto's first strike came in the third frame. Let's see what he can't do with this spare opportunity in frame number four. So how active, how busy uh, are the junior bowling leagues here at Alley Brant Lanes? No, oh, they're very, very active. I mean, uh, I'm actually, the, you know, for the most part, their coach. And so I, you know, help nurture them along. I mean, these two have been with our program for a number of years. And, you know, they, they I mean, from where they were, you know, five, six years ago today, it, it's... It's, it's, you know, incredible, and uh, it's always good to see, you know, them bowling well and improving their game. I mean, they're both in the high school program, so, you know, and just, it's just great to see. Yeah, it, that improvement is the tangible way that you know that you're doing things the right way when you see these bowlers getting better, right? What a great right? shot! Yeah. This feels like a good time to take a short break. We'll be right back with more action on Beat the Champ. Instant replay on Beat the Champ is brought to you by Transit Lanes and Keglers. Join us for bowling, food, and drinks. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Let's get back to the action here on WBBZ TV. What, uh, what are your uh, Saturday mornings, I assume, is when the bulk of the junior bowling uh, happens here? Yes, that's here? correct. Have your uh, the amount of bowlers been pretty consistent? Are you, are every year is there a new group of youngsters that are kind of filling the gap for the kids that are graduating out? Exactly. I mean, um, fortunately, unfortunately, when we uh, started, we, we didn't have much of a program when I came over here, and then uh, so we had an influx of younger kids, and those younger kids have been with our program for like 10 years, so they're starting to get in their high school age, and now we just need to fill them back with uh, with some new blood and. Um, that's what we do a program, you know, called <laughs> called Kids Ball Free, where we encourage kids come. They get two free games every day during the summer. So again, we're just trying to encourage young people to come into our facility. <laughs> you just have to have those families keep having babies, so they keep putting. <laughs> they have younger kids to come back into the program. <laughs> well, you gotta do your part, lock court. <laughs> but you do have a lot of families, right? Like. Uh, multiple. Yes, definitely multi generation. Because he has uh, I mean, Jacob too. Is Jacob bull? Yes, Jacob does yes. bull. And, uh, you know, you have um, you know Gary Kenyon, his son Dan, uh, bulls, and and he's starting to get his son involved, uh, Archer. So Archer is just uh, we just drove them up a new bowling ball a couple months ago, and he's starting to get into bowling. He wants to come here all the time and, and just bowl. Now, if you've uh, been with us any of the last three weeks when Brian has joined us here on the show, we've talked a lot about Brian's role as the treasurer of the National Bowling Proprietors Association, and you're involved in everything that goes into this sport. So when you get together and have these national meetings, how much of the focus is on the junior bowling part of it? How much is it on, uh, you know, you want to appeal to the adults who are a core group of your, of every bowling center's business now, but how much focus is there on the next wave? Well, a lot of that, I mean, we're basically a trade organization um, uh, that falls a little bit more on USBC. 
but our president of our, our association is um, very gung ho and trying to increase the, especially like the middle school program. You know, we have a lot of kids that start off to do well, then there's kind of a little influx, and then you have a high school. So we're trying to fill that gap, mm -hmm. um, trying to, you know, trying to get some more middle school programs involved. Right, kind of that gap of when the kids get a little bit, you know, when they've been doing it for three or four years but aren't old enough to be on a high school team, correct. even though kids like Parker have been on their high school team since they were in seventh grade, <laughs> right? That's correct. Well, when you talk about those uh, new games they come up with for the telescores, um, you think that would, I mean, it's kind of a mix there because you really want the kids to traditionally learn how to bowl so they'll be future league bowlers they'll, they will be able to go to high school they will be able to earn scholarship money go on to, that will help them with college i mean there's a lot in this area as far as scholarship money for, for the kids and yet i think about in my mind i think about these techno games that come out and actually take away from learning how to bowl yes it's a certain aspect but Still, um, you know, part of the you know the hyper bowling and all that is hitting a target. Mm -hmm. So you're actually hitting a target. You're looking at ball reaction because um, just by hitting a target doesn't necessarily mean you're knocking down pins. So you have to kind of figure out how to hit that bumper in right at the right spot and also generate pin count. Um, again, it, it's it's just something different. Is it anything that you would ever? Um make part of your junior program or would you keep those separate? You definitely want to keep that separate because you, uh, the goal of our junior program is number one is to have fun. Number you know, number two is to bowl with um, other like people you know that are you know within your age group and um, just you know create some friendly competition. You know, a lot of our juniors participate in other tournaments um, where they're generating uh, scholarship dollars. Right. Um, so it Everything has its own place in in the bowling business. You know, again, when we have our junior program, we, we want to focus, you know, improving their game, right. yet also having fun. Coming down the stretch in this match, uh, it's a pretty sizable lead for Parker Phillips. Remember, he gets the 11 pin handicap as well, too. Which in this um, case, he didn't need, but. Nope. Nope, but he's going to win this one, uh, it looks like, straight out, and it's been an impressive performance, and as we mentioned, that gives him the one-up on his dad, who was not able to win during our regular competition here, so... What was, his, what was his dad's game? Well, his dad wound up losing to Pat Brick 213-210. Ooh, 210. So, yeah, so we've, uh, we've had a heavy Parker influence here at Alley Brant Lanes this month, or a heavy Phillips family <laughs> influence is what I meant to say. Well, Parker would have to strike out to beat his dad's scratch. Well, Ooh. all right. I'd like to see that. There you go. So There's I hope the he goal. has some ice cream money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so overall, Brian, are you happy with where the state of the, the next generation, the younger generation of bowling is not only here at Alley Brant in Western New York, but across the country as well? Um, you're, you're never satisfied with what you have. Um, you always want to improve. You always want to get more kids involved and all that. Um, once you're satisfied, then you have no room to grow. Mm -hmm. So you always want to do more. You always want to do better. All right, let's see if Parker can uh, pull that off. Well, not quite. Not quite, but he's going to get a win. So it's going to be a victory for Parker Phillips over Anthony Roberto, and it's going to be Parker that will advance to our championship match of the Alley Brant Lanes Junior Bowling Challenge. Who's he going to face? We're going to find out. Our next match is coming up here on Beat the Champ. Well, Anthony, tell me whatever it is that you, what is it that you like so much about bowling? I love that no matter who you are, no matter what size you are, you can still, you can still be great no matter where you came from. You can still develop into a great bowler. Uh, how much time do you put towards this sport? How dedicated are you to continuing to do this uh, as you get older? I try practicing here and there from baseball and stuff like that. Um, I try practicing very often. 
Um, well, and it helps you get a good coach here as well, too, don't you? Yeah. Brian, you got a little scholarship hey, money congratulations. for you. Hey, congratulations. You got a $70 scholarship to go to college, so that's a <laughs> good start for you. There you go. And, we, and if you keep listening to him, you may be bowling while you're in college as well, too, right? Yep. All right, Anthony Roberto with a good performance here. We are ready. Match number two is coming up next on Beat the Champ. <laughs> Match number two features Joseph Lonigan against Callie Raxenberger. And this one's going to be fun. These are two outstanding young bowlers. We've had Joe on our show before. As a matter of fact, Joe won this equivalent event last year here at Alley Brant Lane. That's correct. He actually. Um, so he's our defending junior bowling champion then, there isn't he? There you go. Perfect. All right. Well, let's see how he gets things started here. 16 years old from right here in Lockport is Joe Lonigan, and a regular bowler here at Alley Brant Lane. So give us a scouting report, Brian. Well, he uh, two-handed bowler, um, very he's very good. Um, he's only been bowling for a few years. Um, he's really dramatically improved his game, and uh, you know him, his brother, his uh, folks are here just about every day. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they do love bowling. That's great. I know he watches YouTube video on it. So he's there. The whole family is really into bowling. That's awesome. That's terrific. Speaking of a bowling family, Callie Raxenberger comes from a very prominent bowling family here in Western New York. And the eight year old from Cheektowaga with her first roll of the afternoon. Of course, we've had um, her mom on our show a couple mm -hmm. of times before, and of course, uh, Mom Carrie is the head women's bowling coach at Damon College here in Western New York. So we've got a pretty significant handicap at play as uh, when we show you the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard at Janelle is working on the math on that one, but explain it for us for everybody. <laughs> That's a lot, a lot of pins. She's getting 92 pins, so she has 100 in the first frame. <laughs> <laughs> so that is a big obstacle to overcome. So if, and if Callie keeps knocking the pins down like that, it's going to make Joe's work even tougher for him because he's got to overcome that big number. Well, Kelly's average is 92, which I, I bet she gets every bit of that here today. Mm -hmm. And uh, that would mean that Joe has to shoot probably 200 to beat her. Well, again, if you know, because of a 100% handicap, mm -hmm. you know, if they both pull their average, I mean, they, they tie. So uh, as long as you're bowling, you know, your average, you know, you're going to be right in there. So even though it looks very disparaging right now. Um, <laughs> no, it's exactly still, what it is. There's still nine more frames to go. I mentioned uh, Joe is 16 years old. Brian mentioned he's been bowling for a couple of years, has uh, really taken up and embraced the sport with help from mom and dad. And they're here cheering him on with Sister Molly and Sister Emily and Brother Jack. Everybody's here to see if he can't come up with another victory and take home another trophy from Mr. Borowski here at Alley Brant Lanes. Is it, do you know enough about two-handers to know if it's hard to control your ball speed? It seems to me like with that, <laughs> ball speed um, would be a tougher thing to be a variable than your, by normal conventional bowling. Well, again, it, it is very similar. It's, uh, you know, how fast are they getting to align? I mean, the faster they go, it's going to generate more ball speed. The slower they get, you know, of course, less ball speed. And same thing with, uh, you know, when, when we bowl, um, you know, if we're a little fast in line, the, the ball speed is going to increase. So, again, it's more or less consistency. But, I mean, he's having just a little bit of problem right now. It's just the timing issue. I think he's just ahead of himself just a little bit. See, I kind of thought Anthony had the same issue where if he got it to the right, it hooked up too much, but there was so much oil in the middle that when they kept it in, um, the, the ball just kind of went straight on. They're having a hard time because the way they open up the lane, finding happy medium there, 
Right, and that's, uh, you know, as, as we talked about earlier, that's why sometimes straighter is a little better. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when, when you open up the lane like that, you know, and if you just miss by a board, you can get some you know, big problems. Right, that higher, that rev, it's the rev rate then that they create. That's where they're Correct. getting the problem. Correct. Well, even though she may only be eight years old, Callie has already racked up a nice list of accomplishments. Uh, bowling in the New York State Finals Youth Scholarship Tournament, uh, fifth place in the New York State Adult Junior Championship, uh, a couple of firsts and a second in the Bowling Proprietors Association of Western New York Tournament, Tonawanda Bowling Association first place and second place in the Buffalo Bowling Association Family Tournament in the mother-daughter division and as we said mom is an outstanding uh, bowler here in Western New York and she's uh, she's teaching Callie the right ways to do it and the ways to be successful doing it. <laughs> Kind of like being a teacher, you can't have a, a failing kid when you're a teacher. And you, <laughs> you teach bowling, you can't have a kid that's, that's a bad a good bowler. Point. That ups the pressure a little bit, <laughs> yeah. doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> Mom and dad and grandma, and grandpa uh, are here cheering on Callie. We've had, I saw the mention, we've had her on our show a couple of times already. And, and it, it's kind of fun that we've been doing this long enough now that we are starting to see <laughs> some of these young bowlers start to get better and as they get older to continue to improve upon their games. I think she actually made the show in, um, at Classic, right, last year? I think we saw her at Classic. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's my story. Bri I'm Brian's been on too many flights in the last couple of months to have his memory be that good, right? <laughs> Brian, we talked in relation to Joe as we talked about the two-handed thing. Sue and I have talked about this a lot over the years, and we and it, because there weren't any two-handers on the show the, the past three weeks, it never really came up. But how, how big a revelation in this sport has that been? In your opinion? Well, it, it's been phenomenal, um, you know. Even though we teach kids the basics, they want to see the ball hook. Mm -hmm. They want, they, they like the big hook, even though, you know, uh, it may not be to their advantage, but they love to see the ball hook. So, uh -huh. And this generates some, you know, rev, you know, increase the rev rate that helps them to do that. Oh, that's a nice shot. So that, that's triggered a little bit of that, along with the success well, that, of Belmont. I mean, Belmont has right. been a, incredible ambassador of the two-handed bowler mm -hmm. does he this, does he accept that does he understand how he has been he, he the pied piper um, of a completely different a, way to perform in the sport awesome with that. he he is probably one of our greatest ambassadors in the bowling industry this looks like a good time to take a break we'll be back with more beat the champ right after this welcome back to beat the champ That was a great shot. Nice strike for Joe. He finally loosened up his swing a little bit and didn't force the ball. He's been forcing it, you know. That was seems a little more relaxed. That was in, a in lot more approach. relaxed shot. Yeah. See if Kelly can get back into the swing of things. Well, she's got all the fundamentals. I mean, she's little. Well, I mean, just a few years ago, I mean, she wasn't even taking an approach and, you know, saw her big brother bowl and she goes, I can do that and just picked up the ball and <laughs> started taking steps. And remember, keep in mind that 92 pin handicap. So that's what Joe is working to overcome. Great spare. There we go. Nice spare by Cal. Joe's chopped into that a little bit, but he'll but but it's a big it's a big hurdle to overcome. Pins, yeah. Yeah. It's a big hurdle to overcome and he's coming off a nice strike, so we'll see if he can't continue that. Meanwhile, Callie just keeps knocking those pins down. I, I love the fact that on uh, 
on her information sheet that she filled out for us, which is the same one we use for our regular competition where it says occupation, student obviously, but Damon Women's College Bowling Mascot. I mean, she's hanging out with mom uh, over uh, with the Wildcats. And, uh, and well, I told sure her she had that blank and she had to fill it out. Well, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely you have to fill it out. So I'm sure she is one heck of a terrific mascot for the Wildcats bowling team. Uh oh. <laughs> she, she did the automatic spin around in disgust after uh, letting that one go. We've seen a few of our other bowlers. Yeah, we've done that before when that you're not move, even close. We? <laughs> All right, so maybe there's an opportunity for Joe to chop into that lead in the handicap. Coming off a strike. Don't forget, Parker Phillips is awaiting the winner of this match for our championship match. And then next month, next week, we go right back to our competition with Jason Silberto advancing from last week's show off to Manor 2 to face a whole new group of nine bowlers, and we'll start with that next week. See, we go from one proprietor extreme to another there, don't we? With the always <laughs> wonderful and affable Brian Borowski and the always entertaining in all kinds of ways, Jim Russo. I'm not entertaining. <laughs> no, you're entertaining. I, I, I was trying to think of a no, nice I'm just, way. I'm just not Mr. Excitement, well, I Well, I, I was trying to think of a nice way that, to describe Russo without him yelling at me. Because I wasn't a wrestler when I was a kid, or, you know, had <laughs> tagged okay. the name Mr. Excitement. I, That's okay. I guess so. Okay. Feel free to, uh, you know, to bring some high school and, and youth photos of yourself doing some things for for next <laughs> next time we we're over class. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'll leave we'll those be, in the archives. We'll be, we'll be waiting for that. <laughs> They'll be waiting a long time. <laughs> well, I guess we'll have to look on the internet, Paul. I, I'll leave that to you. You're in charge of that. Colorado Internet. Colorado. Is that where where'd you grow up? Oh, here. 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 Yeah. That's right. You just That's lived in right. Colorado for a while. Maybe you did something crazy in Colorado. Kept um, it yeah, we can't discuss that. <laughs> Another spare. All right, great wow. Nicely done by Tally Raxenberger. <laughs> Yeah, make those spares, right? Just like Coach Borowski says, make That's those correct. spares. There's the updated Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard. As long as Callie keeps knocking those pins down, it's going to be a challenge for Joe, but we'll see if he is up for it as we oh, head no, down the she's, stretch. She's shut him out. He can't catch up. Yep, yet. so she's already got the wind clinched. She does. So it's <laughs> Callie Raxenberger who, with the help of that handicap, is going to get the victory, and that means she's going to advance to our championship match here of the Ali Brant Lanes Junior Bowling Challenge. And get you ready for that final match when we return to beat the champ. Well, now, Joe, you got a goal for next year to come back here and re-win back your championship from last yep. year. You're starting to get used to this whole TV bowling thing? Yeah, it's um, it was definitely fun to do it again this year. I was really hoping to come out with a win, but can't have it every year and just couldn't couldn't find my line uh, through the first couple frames. How much better are you a, a bowler than maybe than you were a year ago? How much do you continue to get better? Uh, I've I've definitely gained a lot of um, a lot of new skill. I've uh, gotten my average up significantly. I've uh, been doing uh, work with multiple different coaches and um, really happy to still be bowling. But 
Right. But your favorite coach is this guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> Especially when he's got a nice envelope That's right. for well, yeah. Congratulations, Joe. Getting very good with practice on the lanes now. So <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't let up, does he? No. You know, you know, keep practicing. Keep practicing. Another nice performance by Joe Lonigan. We are headed towards our championship match of the Alley Brant Lanes Junior Bowling Challenge. It is coming up next. <laughs> It's our championship matchup, Callie Raxenberger against Parker Phillips for the Allie Brant Lanes Junior Bowling Challenge Championship. So we've seen both of these bowlers be very impressive, and now we're going to see which one is going to take home the hardware. Parker Phillips going to get us started, and on the handicap front, Sue, Callie Raxenberger again with a pretty sizable advantage that her opponent will have to try to overcome. At this point, it's a 72-pin handicap. Yes, it is, and she's, um, she's pretty consistent. You know, she makes a couple spares, and, you know, I think she's got, um, she's got 100 in her for sure. Mm -hmm. so. So that just means Parker's going to have to try to get another strike roll like he did when he rattled off four in a row in his first match of the day. Oops. And that one just nicking itself by the one pin. So how often do you bowl in any handicap related events, Sue? Well, league is handicap. Okay. It's not that there's not as many scratch legs as there once was. In fact, there's very few. Um, so I would say that my experience with handicap isn't 100 percent. It's uh, they're like what 85 percent of of the highest average in the league, something like that. But still, I find that that's a debate that probably be a bad idea to get into <laughs> as far as handicap goes. Brian, I'm going to let you decide whether you want to get into it or not. It isn't very popular. I do not. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> that is just one of those things that, you know, if the, the biggest issue is probably in the hands of the scratch bowler is that when you have like a dominant player, say, you know, if, if Jack or, or Joe Sacone or Dave Gwynden or these bigger names and these higher averages, you'll really have a core people of 10, 12 people who are willing to compete with each other. And then everybody else wants to say they're that caliber, but they really don't want to like shoe up and bowl against them. And you can't fill leagues with 12, 13, 14 How people. How about that? How about that strike from Callie Raxenberger? But I, I see your point, right? It, 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 it has, there has to be some equality, in, in particularly if you're going to get lesser bowlers to want to be a part of the leagues, correct? Yeah, because sometimes averages aren't really true indica truly indicative of ability. And yeah. great shot. <laughs> and, and I'm all for being a great house bowler or, or knowing the place that you bowl and having equipment for that bowl. You don't have to invest thousands of dollars to take it to the next level. But the point is, is there's just not enough people at that next level that will compete, will com commit themselves to a night of bowling and to bowl against each other on a regular basis. So you have to have handicap leagues to keep everything alive. Mm -hmm. And that's the best you can really do. Correct. Is it a bit of a challenge as you run leagues to? It's, uh... it's always a challenge. I mean, your, your better bowlers are always gonna say, you know, there's too much handicap and then the, you know, the, the way the handicap is, you know, figured out, you know, your lower average bowlers really don't have, you know, they're behind the eight ball right from the beginning because if, you know, the higher average bowler bowls his average and the lower average bowler bowls their average, the higher average bowler wins 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. um, so. But the point is it's an average and then, the higher average bowler, or, or that bowler, can shoot 260, 270, and that really jacks up your average. Doesn't mean you're shooting that all the time. It just means that you have the ability to shoot it. Shoot it. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, to me, a 180, 190 average bowler is in that sweet spot where they have the ability to shoot 230, 240. So 50 pins above their average. When you average 220, it's kind of hard to shoot 50 pins above your average on a regular basis. Oh, great spare. Terrific spare. 
by Callie Raxon. She ongoing. had the form. She had the, the hand up there. Perfect. Go ahead. It's just an ongoing thing, but at the end of the day, you got to you've got to keep. Um, yeah, keep everyone happy, and that's it, and everything it's a juggling going. act. Mm -hmm. All right, I thought it was an interesting question, as obviously it's played a big role in these matchups here. But in the meantime, uh, both Callie and Parker are bowling great, and there's a better strike for Callie Raxenberger. Eight-year-old Callie Raxenberger from Cheek to Aga knocking all the pins down and without hitting the head pin. Yeah, well, that too. <laughs> Meanwhile, I, I loved Parker, who's 13 years old, with a fist pump after his last strike in the last frame. No. I think uh, the enthusiasm that each of these and all of our junior bowlers have for the sport shows in their emotions that they show after a good shot or a bad shot. I, I think that's a pretty good indication of how fired up they are, one way or the other. Ooh, almost. Almost got that to carry over. Well, I think the one thing, Brian, that we've learned through the course of this show, and particularly these special fourth shows at each bowling center, when we do some stuff with the young bowlers, is how important and how embraced the young generation has been here in Western New York. There doesn't seem to be any shortage of people like yourself that want to be a part of the coaching, or even volunteers that aren't proprietors of the bowling centers that want to be involved and they want to be able to teach the next generation. The action will continue on Beat the Champ in just a minute. Instant Replay on Beat the Champ is brought to you by Transit Lanes and Keglers. Join us for bowling, food, and drinks. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Carrie and Raxi putting their kids into bowling. I mean, because we have such a strong bowler base that as they have children and put them back into bowling, it still keeps it keeps it going pretty well. We see a lot of the kids now getting to the teenage years. And right. Look at Ryan Reese. I mean, look what a good bowler he is. Oh, it's amazing. Well, let's see how Callie will fire, will fire, follow up that impressive spare. She'll have a little work to do on this spare. And, you know, Paul and I were invited to the chil to the kids' banquet there that you guys put on at Salvatore's, and that room is packed. There's, it's full of kids. Yeah, yeah, about it's, 300 people yeah. show up to that event it's a every great, year. It's, it's a great event, and it's a great sign for the future of the sport to go to that event and see how many kids are not only participating, Brian, but just the look on their faces when you get to call their name up there to go give them a trophy. And it means the world to, to, to some of the younger kids that maybe are even new to the sport. Yeah, especially when someone breaks someone else's trophy. That's never, <laughs> it's never a good thing. Sorry, Jacob. <laughs> That's why he's not here today. That's right. <laughs> he's mad at you still. He's still mad at me for breaking his trophy. <laughs> Well, how about that young man that won the big award? I mean, how impressive was he? It, just amazing. I mean, the mm -hmm. whole family is just great, mm -hmm. the Colstons. And, uh, you know, it was just, uh, you know, you, you think you know people, but when, when they, you know, come out of their shell and, and say a little bit more about them, I mean, his resume was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't believe it when he was talking. I, he looked like this little shy guy coming up. Mm -hmm. And then... Wow, did he speak <laughs> amazing. He's 17 years old, I think he was. Yeah. You know, I think it, it occurs to me that, that some uh, the continuing signs of the prominence of young bowling in Western New York is your the college bowling teams, not only are they being added, we talked about <laughs> Callie, Carrie Raxenberger coaching a, a relatively new women's bowling team at Damon. There have been new teams added at DeUville and Madai and women's bowling Villa really Maria women's, yeah. and women's bowling too. So now there's an outlet. We all know the history of ECC and Buff State and some of the other great programs in this town, but now there's outlets for these bowlers mm -hmm. who get to graduate high school and go, oh, hey, I can continue to do this and do it at a high level and, and, and at a college level competition. Mm -hmm. I, I've been very impressed and maybe we don't on this show talk as much about it as we possibly should about the prominence of college bowling in this town. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, the women's have definitely been growing. It's just very disappointed, uh, you know, the colleges, especially UB, mm -hmm. um, not having a program anymore, mm -hmm. Buff State, 
you know, and triple C and uh, you know, when, when we were growing up, I mean, that was a big thing was the college bowling around here, mm -hmm. you know, between us and Rochester going to RIT, going to, you know, Corning and, and all that. And yep. um, now, fortunately, for whatever reason, it just went by the wayside and it, well, may, maybe the return at some of the other schools that I mentioned will prompt a little bit of uh, I think they're getting further involved. acceptance for some of those other bigger schools to bring it back to. I think they're starting with girls teams, but I think that some of them are adding boys teams. I think <coughs> Madai is adding um, a, a boys team. Really? Madai or Damon, one of the okay. two is adding a boys team. Because I think Jeff Walsh is involved with that. Yeah, uh, uh, Title IX plays a role in that as well, too, and just in the administration uh, of it, you know, obviously, uh, you know, particularly with, with schools that have football are going to have a lot more male athletes playing, and then the women's bowling is an opportunity to get more women involved in it, and, and, and all of those decisions at the collegiate level are always based, as they should be, on the Title IX equality and requ requirements as well, too. Yeah, the um, junior gold event that was in Detroit last month. Um, I think they had over oh. 4,000 participants. And I mean, that wow. has been growing so much, and it is just incredible uh, seeing all these young kids bowl, you know, for a week. Yeah, that's good stuff. I, all, this, all the stories and anecdotes, Brian, that you've told about it are, are incredibly encouraging for any bowling fan here in Western New York to know that uh, this, this, this sport's got, its, uh, it got a good future in its hands and the right people are helping to move it along. And Brian, you're, you're one of them as well also. All right, so we knew Parker had the big handicap uh, to overcome the 72 pins for Cali, and uh, it, it, on Parker's side, it hasn't helped that Cali's had a bunch of spares and some stripes. <laughs> um, Parker is doing his part, but he's still got a pretty good hurdle to overcome here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Knocking those pins down is the only way to get there. You know, and again, here you know, here you talk about you talk about uh, Cali, who's Mom is a very prominent female bowler in Western New York and a coach. Uh, we talked about Parker's dad was on our show a couple of weeks ago. He's a prominent bowler here at Alley Brant Lanes. And, and uh, to see the generational pass down of the sport is pretty cool. All right, well, Park, Parker's got a little frown on the face there. He's getting a little down on himself, but. Gonna keep fighting his way through it. Getting down to the stretch here. Come on. Oh, sorry. Take it off. Almost got it. Got the one of the two pins, did Parker. So Callie needs three pins in two frames total to, to win. The best that Parker can shoot is 178. And Kelly has 176. Well, that one is tracking well, and that will get her yeah, the seven that pins is enough. that she needs. So, with a little help from the handicap, but some really good bowling as well, too, we are going to crown a new Allie Brant Lanes Junior Bowling Champion. It is going to be Callie Raxenberger. We will do that and talk to both of our bowlers when we return. It's Beat the Champs Special Fourth Edition here at the Allie Brant Lanes in Lockport. We're back right after this. Well, we had another fun junior bowling challenge here at Alley Brant Lanes. Callie Raxenberger is our champion. Parker, you put on a pretty good fight there. You bowled really well in the first match. What is it about this sport uh, that you enjoy so much, and why do you make the point to spend as much time practicing and trying to get better? I don't know. I just uh, enjoy the sport. I mean, I don't know. I just have fun doing it and coming out here and just something to do. Um, how was it uh, bowling on TV here? How did you settle into your for, for, for all of this? I liked it. 
my for my second time. It was pretty. It was fun. You're getting to be a veteran on this show, aren't you? So, and uh, you did something that Dad didn't do on this show, which is come up with a victory. So please Ooh. remind him about that. Wow. Oh, I will definitely give him a big thing about that one. And I'd like to I'd like to give a shout out to my brother and Phil Mitchell from the Town of Niagara Parks Department. All right, there you go. Look at he's doing he's doing endorsements. He's got sponsors. He's wow. ripping Dad. He's got it all covered, doesn't he? Uh, he does. Yeah. <laughs> Well, make them feel a little better. All right, we got a $118 scholarship for you, buddy. <laughs> Good job, Parker. Well done. Speaking yeah, of well done, Sue. Good job out there. Nice job. Did you have fun today? Yeah. Did your mom teach you a lot about bowling? Yeah. <laughs> Do you like being interviewed? Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice having your mom and dad here to cheer you on. It looked like a lot of fun out there. And, um, you know, just racking up another title. How many is that for you now? Yeah, a lot. We yeah, saw your lot. we saw your resume. Yeah. Do you have a green jacket though? <laughs> yeah, where's your green jacket? Well, Mr. Brian won't give me one. So. <laughs> 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 I don't have one because Mr. Brian won't give me one. <laughs> well, you have to earn. <laughs> okay, well, well, we got something else for you. Don't we, Parker? Right? <laughs> you good, Will? Yeah, she sure is. We got, got a lot of attitude up there. I like it. Attitude is good. Just like her mom. <laughs> All right. I'm just not a bad attitude. <laughs> okay. All right. Before this gets out of control, we're going to wrap it up. Soon I'll come back for more fun here at Alley Brant Lane. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if the future of bowling in this sport is led a little bit by Callie and Parker, we know they've got the right attitude, don't they? I know. I don't want to bowl against her. I'm staying out of that one. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was great. It was great to see him. She is a terrific young bowler. She's only going to get better. Parker, you can see, has a lot of skills. So did Joe and Anthony. This was really fun and really impressive. Yeah, it's the future of bowling. and. You know, I just want to say that Callie and Brian know each other very well, and I know that, that they have a fun little rapport going that um, was kind of playing out on TV for yes, us. Yes, it but, was. But yeah, it's always fun watching the kids bowl and watching the two-handers evolve and um, just seeing where the sport takes us. Yeah, all right, so we're going to get back to our regular competition bowling next week as we move to Manor Two Lanes. Jason Siliberto, who's on that winning streak, having bowled really well here, will have to take his game that thrives here at Alley Brant off to another bowling center. Well, you know, he's just going to bowl. Yeah, just going to bowl. <laughs> and uh, that's what he does, and that's what I learned from talking to him is yes. that, um, you know what, it's just matter of fact to him, and he just does his business and doesn't really overthink it. Yeah. Just and plays he, his game. And he just does it very, very very well. Always fun to go to Manor 2, hang out with our buddy, Mr. Excitement, uh, Jim Russo. You ready for that? Yeah, it should be a great time. Yes, it should. Well, that'll be next week when the whole gang joins you from Manor 2 Lanes for the next series of competition here on Beat the Champ. <laughs>